on a Tuesday morning in September of 1920, a little over a century ago now. The citizens of Marathon County joined with the rest of Wisconsin in doing their democratic duty in voting in a primary election. The purpose of this election was to see which of the candidates would end up having their names represent their parties on the official ballot come November. But the real excitement of the day was not who was winning the votes, but who was casting them. Because just a few weeks earlier, in August of 1920, the 19th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution had been ratified by enough states to become the law of the land, thereby giving women the right to vote. So this was the first municipal election in which the women of Wisconsin were legally allowed to cast a ballot. This was the culmination of decades of campaigning and hard work by generations of Wisconsin women and men, including a handful of individuals from here in Marathon County. As it turns out, the hotbed of suffragist sentiment in central Wisconsin was not centered in the clubs of the affluent Yankee women of Wassa, nor was it found among the German farm wives scattered across the rural parts of the county. Instead, Marathon County's contribution to the suffrage movement was centered largely in a small community of Schofield. But this is a different Schofield than what we see today. This was decades before the industrial park and the manufacturing companies arrived. It was before the Wisconsin River was dammed, before the paper mill was built, before most of the residential neighborhoods were built, and before the trolley line was extended down Grand Avenue. It was before Grand Avenue. At this point, there wasn't a whole lot in Schofield. A few homes here, a sawmill there, and a schoolhouse that stood on a sandy hill just south of the bridge. One old-timer later recalled that this hill was so sandy that it made walking to the schoolhouse slow and tedious, particularly on dark nights. And she recalled how, while complaining about the sandy hill one night, she was overheard by Mrs. Elmedia B. Gray, who told her that if she was willing to come and help out the following day, she would come and supply the materials for a sidewalk. And sure enough, true to her word, the next morning, Mrs. Gray appeared there with supplies packed in a wagon, driving a team of horses by herself. And so they spent the day building a wooden sidewalk over the sand. And while they worked, Mrs. Elminia B. Gray apparently turned to her younger companion and told her that the right to lay the sidewalk was one the men would never think of denying us. Elmedia B. Gray was at the center of a small but passionate suffragist group in Schofield in the 1880s. She and her friends helped to organize events, distribute materials, and even spurred the creation of similar suffrage groups in nearby Mosinee and Grand Rapids. And when the Wisconsin Women's Suffrage Association was revived in 1882, Elmedia Gray would become a charter member, and even served as chairman of the executive committee. A directory for the organization published in 1885 said of Gray that, quote, her character as a suffrage worker is summed up in saying she is an efficient chairman of the executive committee, unquote. Maybe not the most inspiring description ever put to paper, but that was okay, because Almedia knew that she was there to empower other women to do what they needed to do, and she would be there for all that the 1880s had to offer, for the triumphs of 1886 and 87, and the setbacks of 1888. But by the end of the 1880s, the Greys, like many of the Wisconsin suffragists, were disheartened by the lack of progress. And so they decided to leave Wisconsin. They moved to Los Angeles, California, El Media in 1889, and her husband a few years later after settling his business interests in Schofield. In California, Mrs. A.B. Gray continued to volunteer for the cause of equal suffrage, a cause that succeeded in winning full women's suffrage in California in 1911. And before her death in 1921, Elmedia would have seen the passage of the 19th Amendment, extending the constitutional right to vote to women in the United States. One of Elmedia's daughters was still living in Marathon County on that Tuesday in September of 1920, so Elmedia would almost certainly have known that the women there were voting for the very first time in municipal elections. It would have been a very different Schofield than the one she left 30 years earlier. The paper mill had been built. An electric streetcar line had gone in. Whole neighborhoods had sprung up. And in turn, very few there probably would have recognized Mrs. A.B. Gray. Her contributions to the cause of equality were largely omitted from the historical record, and none of the newspapers even published an obituary for her when she died in 1921. Over the years, the memory of Elmedia B. Gray and her suffragist friends in Schofield were largely forgotten in Marathon County, 
washed away by the passage of time, just as that wooden sidewalk she helped build all those years ago finally got carried away by some flood or another that struck the area. It's a fate that's far too common for the history of women in our communities, the being forgotten part, not the being swept away in a flood. With a little persistence, though, and if you know where to look, you might just find a couple bits and pieces that let you uncover and rediscover their stories. Stories like having the right to build a wooden sidewalk on the sands of Schofield. By the way, if you're interested in learning more about the history of the Marathon County connections to the suffrage movement, as well as the 19th Amendment, well then, good news, because we're actually going to be using this as the topic for our first History Speaks on the Air. It's part of our History Speaks lecture series, but now we're doing it to you live in the internet. So this will be about an hour-long presentation. We'll really get into some of the details about the suffrage movement here in Marathon County, in Wisconsin, and, and beyond. It'll be streamed right here where you're watching this, either on Facebook Live or YouTube Live. Both places are available. So if you're interested and you can make it, we'd love to have you join us and talk a little bit about women's history and the suffrage movement. Thanks for watching.